नमस्कार टुडे वी विल बी बिगिनिंग विथ द लास्ट वीक ऑफ आर क्लासेज ऑफ द कोर्स ऑन सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट विच इज़ वीक एट एंड दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट लेक्चर इन मॉड्यूल एट ऑफ आर कोर्स ऑन सेल्स एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मैनेजमेंट वी शैल बी बिगिनिंग आर डिस्कशन ऑन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल मैनेजमेंट फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन एंड द फर्स्ट टॉपिक विच वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग इन टू पार्ट्स इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल्स सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग सेवरल टॉपिक्स वी विल स्टार्ट विद एन इंट्रोडक्शन एंड देन वील मूव ऑन टू डिफाइनिंग अ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल वॉट इज अ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल वाई डू वी नीड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल्स वॉट आर द फंक्शन ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल्स वॉट आर चैनल फ्लोज एंड देन वील ऑल्सो टॉक अबाउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन चैनल्स Uh, this is what we shall come, you know do in this first lecture and in the subsequent lecture which will be part 2 we shall be talking about the types of uh, distribution networks where we will speak about marketing channels in consumer markets and for services and for industrial products uh, we shall also talk about patterns of distribution uh, we will discuss what are the different types of channel intermediaries how do you design a distribution channel uh, strategy and what are the factors which affect the design uh, of marketing channels and what are the factors which affect the selection of channel partners so let us now begin with a brief introduction about what are marketing channels we also refer to them as uh, trade channels and uh, we will speak about what are channel partners or channel intermediaries or trade channel members uh, these are all in the same all of them are the same so when we talk about a distribution channel the distribution channel is also referred to as a trade channel or a marketing channel and uh, the various players in the channel are referred to as the channel partners or channel members or trade channel members or marketing intermediaries uh, so so we will be uh, now discussing uh, you know about what a distribution channel is or what what a trade or a marketing channel is so i repeat when we talk of a distribution channel it is synonymous to a trade channel or a dist or a marketing channel and the various players uh, you know who who are responsible for uh, you know you know for making the good or the service available to us uh through these different uh, you know uh, channels are referred to as uh, you know channel partners or channel members or trade channel members or marketing intermediaries so um let us discuss uh, what what a distribution channel is now let us begin with our discussion on distribution management now uh, in the first lecture itself we had mentioned that both sales and distribution management are intertwined they cannot exist and function without each other and uh, the sales person may perform very well on the field he may secure orders he may perform satisfactorily but until and unless the product reaches the customers on time the former's efforts would go totally and totally in vain and that is where uh, you know the importance of the uh, distribution uh, management uh, you know is realized it is a very very crucial uh, function that must be addressed so that uh, you know uh, the right product is available at the right place at the right time and at the right price to the customers so while sales management formulates the strategy and tactics distribution management helps implement these plans and both sales and distribution management go hand in hand Now, distribution management deals with all those various activities which are associated with the distribution of goods and services. It is a very, very important aspect of sales management, and the basic objective here is to create time, place, and acquisition utility for customers. Uh, we shall be discussing about time, place, and acquisition utility subsequently. But in order to can create and retain a set of class, you know, a set of satisfied customers, companies must ensure that the right products reach the right customers at the right time, at the right place, and at the right price. And it is here that uh, you know. Uh, uh distribution management uh it becomes something an efficient distribution management becomes something which is extremely important for an organization it is an important aspect of sales management and holistically comprises the set of all those activities which facilitate the transfer of goods by creation of an effective and efficient supply chain so it is very very critical crucial that companies give a lot of attention to uh, the distribution channel and to uh, you know and devise a distribution management strategy so that uh, you know they can uh, ensure that the efforts put in by the sales force do not go in vain and the orders that are secured can be delivered on time at the right place at the right price as and when customers want it 
Now, what is the meaning of a distribution channel? Now, distribution management may be defined as the management of activities which facilitate the movements of goods and services so as to create time, place and acquisition utility and ensure that the right kinds of products are available at the right time and at the right place. We are all in the in the previous slides also and even now we have been we are emphasizing upon uh, the right time, the right place, the right product uh, and the right price because this actually goes with the fundamental concept of logistics management and it is very very essential that in today's day and age where there is huge amount of competition uh, you know uh, customers are able to get what they want at the right place at the right time in the right quantities uh, as and when they want it and at the right price. So, distribution management actually uh, you know includes all those aspects ranging from transportation management to storage ma management to inventory management and so forth. So, all important issues with respect to order processing. Uh, warehousing, transportation, uh, you know, and inventory management uh, collectively are taken care of under distribution management. Companies rely on distribution channels as channel members can reach customers across a wide uh, geographical reach and more core comp and are more core competent in selling to customers. I, I, you know, it is absolutely not possible for a company to have its own warehouses, it have its own. Um, transportations have its own outlets from where it can sell and so it relies on the tree on, on the channel partners or on the you know channel intermediaries or marketing intermediaries to help them do this task because the channel members or the trade channel members and the marketing intermediaries are more core competent uh, not only uh, you know in, in in matters you know of storage and warehousing and transportation but also with respect to selling to the end customers now when we are talking about distribution management and the various activities these are uh, these have you know hold good for both the b2b and the b2c scenario uh, in distribution management is critical not only for industrial uh, not only for consumer buying or consumer markets but also for industrial markets and uh, organizational buying because you know whether it is uh, the end consumer or whether it is a B2B consumer, both of them would require that the right product reaches them at the right time and at the right place and uh, in the right quantity. And so, uh, you know, distribution management takes care of both uh, the B2B as well as the B2C customer segments. Now, the key facets of distribution management are realized through a distribution channel, which is defined as the structure of intra company organization units and extra company agents, dealers, wholesalers and retailers through which a commodity product or service is marketed. This is how the American Marketing Association defines a distribution channel. So, uh, when we are talking about what is a distribution channel, uh, it is the structure of intra company organization units and extra company agents, dealers, wholesalers and retailers through which a commodity product or service is marketed. Um, Cutler uh, and Armstrong have also defined uh, you know the, the marketing intermediaries or the trade channel or the distribution channel as a set of in independent organizations involved in the process of making a product or a service available for use or consumption by the customer or the industrial user. So, that is where we, we, we can see that uh, you know distribution channels are relevant not only for the B2B or the B2C, but they are relevant for both. They are relevant for both the B2C scenario as well as the B2B scenario. Stern and uh, L Ansari have given a very uh, popular definition about marketing channels and they say that marketing channels are set of interdependent organizations involved in the process of making a product or a service available for use or consumption. Now, we, we started with the importance of uh, distribution management and if you go back the previous slide we said that distribution management is, the, is, is defined as the management of activities which facilitate the movement of goods and services so as to create time place and acquisition utility and ensure that the right kinds of products are available at the right time and at the right place and we also mentioned uh, the, the 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 critical issues which need to be dealt with with respect to order processing inventory management warehousing transportation etc and this entire task uh, you know is actually uh, taken care of by the distribution channel so distribution management is something which 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 which, which is uh, you know uh, implemented or executed at at the you know <coughs> 
grassroots level by the channel members or by the trade channel members or by the marketing intermediary. So, while a company may design a uh, distribution management strategy, uh, it, the actual implementation and execution happens with and through the marketing intermediaries or the uh, trade channel members or the distribution channel. So, while broad guidelines for distribution management may be laid by the company itself or by the organization, it is given form and shape, it is executed by members of the distribution channel and that is where uh, you know the, def the definition from the American Marketing Association becomes very relevant where they speak of a distribution channel as a structure of intra company organization units and extra company agents, dealers, wholesalers, retailers through which a commodity product or service is marketed. So, the broad guidelines may be, re may be actually laid out by the company, but it is the marketing channel members or the trade channel members or the marketing intermediaries who are uh, you know uh, the interdependent organizations who are involved in the process of making the good or service available to the customer or to the industrial user. Now, why do we need distribution channels? Now, distribution channels play a very important role in ensuring uh, that the product assortment reaches the end customer at the right place at the right time and at the right price and channel members perform very, very important functions. Uh, they, they, they actually uh, have a physical reach and you know uh, and, and, and they are able to distribute the products to the customers. Uh, they play a big role in gathering information, providing feedback to the company, placing orders, negotiations, financing, they also bear risks, uh, they play a role in inventory management, they provide after sales service to the customers and they also play a very key role in, main, in, in developing and maintaining customer relationships. Distribution channels bring buyers and sellers together and they foster sharing of information and distribution of products to the customers. The customer is, is goes to the uh, change to the dealer or to the distributor or to the retailer and he seeks information about products, about, about brands, about the variants, the features, the benefits, the pricings, etc. And the distribution channel members then uh, actually uh, encourage uh, you know the prospect towards a purchase. Uh, you know also the distribution routes uh, in terms of both transportation and warehousing and uh, you know uh, mo overall movement of products is designed in such a way that there is a cost reduction. Uh, channel members take title to or ownership of the product and they facilitate the movement of goods and services from the manufacturer to the end customer. They provide uh, or, or even to the industrial customer, they provide information to the customer about the product, about the price, about the availability. They provide feedback to the company about customers needs, wants, preferences and customer reactions towards the company's offerings as well as the competitors offerings. Uh, channel members also receive orders from the customers and pass them on to the company. They negotiate on price and delivery terms both backwards with the company or with I mean the vendor or the supplier as well as uh, forwards with the customers. Uh, they take care of the working capital requirements of the channel members upstream uh, you know um, and, and, and they receive payments from the customers and pass them on backwards. So, in this way they take care of the working capital requirements of the channel members upstream. And they also play a very important role in arranging credit facilities for customers downstream. So, both upstream and downstream when they collect payments and remit the same, they are actually trying to meet the needs of the working capital of the channel members upstream and when they arrange for credit facilities, they are trying to help the customers downstream. They also bear risk with respect to storage and transportation. Of course, this is more of a tangible risk and there is another risk which they take which is more intangible and relates to their goodwill and reputation especially in the case of new products because uh, you know the success and failure of a new product could actually impact uh, their goodwill and rep <coughs> reputation. So, if a product succeeds it is ok, but if a product does not succeed or is not well accepted by the people or there is a problem with the quality or uh, you know other issues in those cases uh, the, the reputation of the channel member also uh, you know gets to is, gets affected. So, uh, they undertake risks associated with ownership of the product, they handle damaged goods as well as warranties and guarantees after sales. Also channel members arrange for promotion of the product be it local advertising, displays, hoardings, uh, point of purchase stimuli, 
uh, they arrange for you know demonstrations they, they handle the entire personal selling effort and channel members also cater to customer complaints and after sales services and they contribute towards building good relations with the customers so in this way channel members play uh, you know a big role and they have perform a large number of functions now overall distributions channels provide place time and acquisition utility for customers we discussed this in the previous slide as well that uh, the channel members provide for place uh, time and acquisition utility so let us discuss this a little more now when we talk about place utility what we are trying to talk of is something which is spatial discrepancy spatial discrepancy relates to the physical distance between a product's place of manufacture and the place of consumption by uh, the consumer so uh, it, it is basically uh, you know related to the physical distance between the product's place of manufacture or uh, you know the factory where it is being produced or manufactured and the place of consumption that is the place where it is being consumed by the customer so distribution channels overcome the barrier of distance between the company and the customer they arrange to carry the products from the manufacturing units to places near the customers and this is very important as customers uh, are geographically scattered across the country across the world and must be and 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 they must be reached with the least cost the products must uh, reach uh you know them uh, at at the mo at the least cost as possible now companies ensure that their products and services are found at as many outlets as possible or if even if the outlets are less they are actually located at at distances conveniently uh, located for a customer to access now for example uh you know a particular company may be making uh, soaps and that and the factory for uh you know the manufacture of the soap is in uttar pradesh on the other hand the customers for the soap may are scattered across the country a person who is in west bengal uh, cannot be expected to go to uttar pradesh to buy one or two units of soap and that is why it becomes uh, you know the responsibility of the company to ensure that the soap reaches the customer at west bengal or at himachal pradesh or wherever he is so here we see that it through a distribution channel uh and through the different tasks of uh, storage warehousing transportation uh and, you know and uh, physical distribution and physical ownership uh, the product reaches the customer wherever he is despite the fact that it may be manufactured several and several miles away so that is how companies use the trade channel members or the channel partners to reduce the physical distance between the product's place of manufacture and the place of consumption this is what we mean by the spatial discrepancy and 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 companies ensure, must ensure that uh, customers are provided with the place utility and the spatial discrepancy is dealt with in the right in in, in the best possible manner the second uh, thing which we talk of is time utility and here we will speak about temporal discrepancy now temporal discrepancy relates to the difference in time with respect to when a product is manufactured and when it is consumed now distribution channels also overcome time barriers this helps customer requirements being met promptly and with the least delay products may be available to customers within a day or within a week or within a month as and when they ask for and so products must be manufactured on an ongoing basis and made available closer to actual points or places of consumption as and when the customer wants it we all know that customers demand with respect to products is not always smooth it can be erratic however production must go on and on because uh you know based on the market demand based on the uh, company's de de demand companies must plan their production schedule such that uh, the production is ongoing and based on requirements in uh, you know in uh, in the in the in states or in territories the products can reach the customers as and when customers want them so uh, this here really, so so that the customer does not have to wait for Uh, his favorite brand to reach him or for his uh, for a product to reach him so it's very very important and essential that production is is, is goes on and is ongoing activity and uh, inventory management is taken care of order processing transportation and warehousing uh, are given attention to such that uh, you know the customer is able to get what he wants when he wants it uh, at the right time and 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 and, and as promptly as possible 
The third thing which we talk of is product assortment. Now, customers desire that several products be available to them at the same outlet. For example, if you wish to buy your monthly groceries, you will want all your groceries to be available at the same store. If you want your toiletries to be made available, you will you, to be bought on a monthly basis. Again, you would want the same shop or the same outlet to sell you uh, sell to you uh, the soaps or shampoos or talcum powders, etc. So, customers desire that several products be available to them at the same outlet and distribution channel members offer a wide variety of products under one roof, although these may have been manufactured by the company in different plants and at different places. Also, they offer products made by one or several companies that even competitors products are also available. So, in this case, channel members provide to customers a wide assortment, a broad assortment, uh, you know, which, which, which customers would be happy uh, to, to accept because they can get it from the same store and the customers would get a wide option to choose from the product assortment. Channel members also play an important role in bulk breaking. While production is done in large quantities, to especially to achieve economies of scale, purchase and consumption is always in small sizes. Distributors or wholesalers, they break products into small quantities and customers because we be, and, and then sell it on to the customers who may buy only one or two units. Customers will never buy 1000 units in one go, they would buy one or two. So, distributors and wholesalers buy in large lots and further divide them into smaller lots for the customers. So, so, if we talk a little bit about uh, you know uh, the place utility and the time utility and the possession utility, what we talk of uh, is in terms of uh, you know uh, a little bit more uh, you know on uh, them we can explain with the help of an example. For example, a person wants to buy a packet of biscuits. Now, the biscuit packet would be made available at the nearest retail outlet. Although the biscuits may have may have been manufactured several and several miles away. So, this brings in the concept of the place utility. Second, the biscuit packet would be made available as and when uh, the customer wants it at any time of the day and or any time of the week. And this is here what we refer to as time availability, so sorry, time utility. And the third is in terms of the possession, which is once he pays for the biscuit packet, he takes title to it and becomes the owner and would consume it as and when he wants it to to to. So, so that becomes the acquisition or the possession utility. Now, let us come to the functions of distribution channels and channel members. We have already discussed some of these. Let us go a little more deeper into them. The first function that they perform is physical distributions. Now, channel members assure extensive market coverage for a company. They play an important role by coordinating delivery schedules in such a manner that the requirements of the customers are met on time. They deal with warehousing, transportation and, and so the goods can be made available to the customers of the right quantity at the right time and at the right place. And uh, channel members also act as a medium for offering services, uh, you know, uh, or credit services and after sales assistance as well as managing uh, returns or warranties or guarantees, etc. So, in this way, channel members or channel partners play a very key role in physical distribution. Second is in terms of, of uh, you know, the touch point or they are offering the touch point. Now, customers for a company may be scattered all over uh, the country and, uh, and the company may not be in a position to meet customer demands with respect to products and after sales service on its own. So, the dealers, the distributors, the retailers, they serve as the touch points on behalf of the company for the customers. The customers contact these channel members, whether they are the dealers or the distributors or the retailers. And, and so, the kind of help and assistance which uh, customers can get from these channel partners or from these trade channel members decreases the need for the company, you know, to, to, to provide uh, touch points on its own or to provide its own company owned outlets, thereby reducing the overall cost for the company. Third is in terms of inventory management. Now, effective and efficient inventory management is a prerequirement for ensuring that good reach the that goods reach the customers on time. Uh, in fact, at the right quantity at the right time is something which we have been talking of. So, inventory management helps avoid out of stock situations as well as poor assortment mix situations, which might reduce the sales for the company and bring a bad name to the organization. 
uh, channel members play a role in bulk breaking. Bulk breaking is the process of breaking up large lots of products into smaller ones. So, distribution channels break bulk and they distribute the goods as per the requirements of the retailers at the next level. And uh, this, this eases the process of distributing goods as per the requirements of the customers. Also, as every customer buys in small quantities for his own use, bulk breaking becomes very, very important. It also ensures sufficient quantity of products is always available to meet the needs of the customers. Channel partners play a key role in communication. Uh, distribution channels offer a platform for sharing information about company products and services with the customers. Customers, because the channel partners act as touch points, the customers contact them. They seek information about products, brands, prices, etc. And uh, channel partners also offer ground for advertising, for advertising the company's products and services via point of purchase displays and local advertising. They supplement the communication efforts by the company and help build a good name for the, for the company. Channel partners also play a very, very important role in providing feedback about the market to the company. Channel members communicate uh, you know, the feedback that they have received from the customers to the company. They are one of the most important sources for the company, uh, sources of information for the company with respect to market happenings uh, when it comes to understanding customer needs, wants and preferences as well as competitor strategies. Retailers at the ground are in touch with customers. Their feedback is Im of immense importance when it comes to product improvements or when it comes to uh, you know, changes with respect to uh, you know, you know, uh, delivery terms or uh, with respect to negotiations on prices, uh, etc. Channel partners bear financial risk, they, they help in countering and overcoming financial risk by offering uh, you know, advanced payments. The credit offered to wholesalers by the company and to retailers by the whole, wholesalers is done such that it can supplement company sales by taking the responsibility of ensuring that the products reach the uh, customers on time, retailers reduce the manufacturer's risk in a big way. And of course, channel partners also provide a lot of guidance and technical support. Distribution channels help customers in understanding the functions and features of the product. Channel members or channel partners, they provide demonstrations to customers and help them, you know, uh, you know help, you know, and educate them with respect to product usage. And they provide information to customers at the point of purchase and play a very important role in overcoming their doubts. They also provide <coughs> support post purchase. So, it is the presence of the channel members in an area which assures customers you know, that they can look up to somebody if there is a problem or there is a difficulty with respect to the product. Now, we come to channel flows. Now, when we talk about channel partners, channel members, distribution channel, what actually flows uh, you know, in a channel are referred to as channel flows. There is a physical flow of goods, there is a title flow of ownership of goods. Uh, there is a payment flow which refers to payments from the customers uh, to, 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 you know, to the retailers and from the retailers to the wholesalers <coughs> and from the wholesalers to the manufacturer. It also refers to the financing which takes place uh, you know, where uh, the wholesaler may finance the retailer or the retailer may finance uh, the customer. Uh, flows also happen with respect to information and promotion. Now, we can actually classify these flows into forward, backward, both ways and reverse. So, forward flows are from the company to the customers and these are generally physical flows of goods and services and there is also the title flow uh, which is again a forward flow. Promotion is also a forward flow. Black backward flows are those which are from the customers to the company and they are in form of payments, returns, ordering. We have both way flows where it is from the company to the customers and the customers to the company again. So, it, is with, it, is, it, is, it happens in the case of information sharing, negotiations, risk bearing and we also have something called reverse flows which are which is again from the customer to the uh, company uh, which, is with, which is for uh, you know in cases of refurbishing, recycling, refilling etc. Coming to classification of distribution channels, now cha distribution channels can actually be classified in three categories, the sales channels, the delivery channels and the service channels. 
sales channels the job of a sales channel here lies in increasing the you know sales of the company the focus is on information sharing encouraging consumers towards purchase negotiating and bargaining and offering credit facilities to push sales so here uh, the sales channels main 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 objective is to uh, increase the sales of the company and they do so by encouraging buyers towards purchase now the buyers here could be again a b2b scenario or a b2c scenario and uh, to, to 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 actually uh, encourage them encourage buyers towards purchase the sales channels uh, share information uh, they negotiate and bargain and offer credit facilities the second kind of channels which we speak of is a delivery channel the job here of the delivery channel to is to ensure that products reach the customers at the right time and at the right place and here uh, you know issues or uh, issues that are to de are dealt with are with respect to inventory management transportation warehousing and assortment issues and then there are service channels where the job uh, is to offer after sales services and uh, Uh, the, the focus here is on encouraging repurchase by providing to customers so services after sales keeping them happy keeping them satisfied and creating a loyal customer base so with this we come to an end of this particular lecture the references are still kandev govoni puri uh, sales and distribution management 2017 pearson india havaldar and kavale sales and distribution management 2017 megrohill panda and sadev sales and distribution management 2012 oxford university press as well as 2011 oxford university press This brings us to an end of the first lecture on the eighth module of the course. We shall continue with our discussion on distribution channels in the next lecture. Thank you.